Hey guys, so the Zabbix 5.2 is released and we can finally get familiar with the new functionality which is now included in this recent release of the monitoring software. So what I have here on my screen is just the what's new page, uh, what's new in the Zabbix 5.2 from the official thezabbix.com and also the composed installation of the Zabbix 5.2.0 from the Docker container. So we will actually have a chance to see how uh, the functionality mentioned here looks like in the actual front end and uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the synthetic monitoring so this functionality enables the scripted scenarios for complex data collection and reliable multi-step availability monitoring so as we can see on the script we're talking about items and uh, as there is highlighted there is a new item type called script so when we talk about items we immediately think about a templates or about a host in this case i will use my zabbix server host so so if we're creating a new item, then uh, we need to choose from the monitoring type, right? Like how we're going to get the data, will it going to be through the agent or a SNMP? So there is a new type added script, which is... Uh, in terms of uh, most of the parameters, it is just a regular item, so you need to define some sort of the name, uh, key, which in this case will be just a placeholder, parameters that you can use, and the most important part is the script. So this parameter is the one where you can write your own JavaScript which this item will use to gather some sort of the data. So instead of simple like uh, connect to uh, web service API endpoint and gather some data, we can actually uh, script some more complex scenario where our item will be first of all connecting to one web service, using the authentication, gathering some sort of the token, and then connecting to some other web service by using the token that we gathered in a step one and doing notification once again and actually acquiring the data and so yeah a new very flexible way how you can monitor your web services and api endpoints and then just like usually process it with uh, the triggers so inform about the problems or visualize the data in your uh, dashboards or the graphs so what else of functionality do we have we have a zabbix insights and these are the new trigger functions like which will allow you to get a most of your history data, a new set of the trigger functions that enables a long-term data analysis and allows to create powerful insight like detect anomalies and a system misbehavior. So basically, instead of just uh, analyzing, let's say, last five values or average within five minutes or just one single latest value, we will be comparing multiple periods of time and also the history. Like you might be thinking that... Uh, wait but analyzing the history like uh, in a larger periods will affect the performance wise but wait these trigger functions actually work with the trend data not with the history data from the past so now you can get a smart alerts about detected anomalies such as total amount of the network traffic increased by 28 percent in the september amount of new user registrations decreased by 12 percent last week and then like you have you have open hands so you can decide how you want to use these uh, new trigger functions you can monitor like kpis of your company and uh, other stuff so decision is up to you uh, storage of secrets in the external vault which is absolutely huge like uh in the regards of the Zabbix previously, we a lot of times talked about the security and yes, there is always some attempts to improve the security, but at the same time, you know, if those things like uh, the database configuration parameters, uh, sorry, not the configuration, but authentication parameters is username, password and a DB host was stored just in the configuration file of the Zabbix server which is just a plain text and accessible by the Zabbix user and also sometimes in the front end like if we are using some sort of the SSH uh, items or could be the same as an MP or whatever else we must provide some sort of the passwords and uh, sensitive information that we want to hide from some unwanted eyes so starting with the Zabbix 5.2 the integration with HashiCorp vault is enabled which allows you to 
securely keep all of your secrets and make sure that no bad eyes will see those passwords so first of all in the front end like when you did all the configuration with the HashiCorp and you of course need to configure it on your own then as you can see when there is a first time configuration wizard of your front and you can provide all the uh, you can first of all choose that you want to store the credentials in the HashiCorp vault and then provide all the endpoint path and authentication token for the HashiCorp um, then in the front end let's say we, we have our Zabbix server and I want to use some sort of the macro and uh, write a password but this value will be a huge secret so Previously, there was only one option. We could just keep it as a plain text visible for everybody. Then recently in a 5.0, we added a secret text, which basically masks it, but still in the database, it, it has actual values. And if you get a data, uh, access to the database, you can read the value of this macro. So now there is a new possibility, vault secret, which will actually store it inside a vault and uh, without all the required tokens, which is uh, not really possible to get, nobody will have access to get this value. And the same applies also to the configuration files like, um, yeah, fine green control tokens, passwords, uh, usernames and other stuff. So it is also possible to uh, store um, store information from your configuration files as a db password and a db user in a HashiCorp vault. So now by using all the new functionalities with a HashiCorp, with an encryption, um, encryption to the database, you can make your Zabbix really secure. But keep in mind, this comes only in the Zabbix 5.2. So user roles to the control permissions. This is really huge and it will require a separate video or even a two to go really deep about it. But remember previously, there was basically just three user types inside a Zabbix. There still are three user types. There is a, just a user, admin, and a super admin. And when we are creating a user, we need to specify that this user will be... Um, where we add it here, uh, sorry, not here, permissions, in the user groups, I guess, or in the user roles where we are setting it up, yes. So we need to decide, will it be a user, uh, admin, or a super admin? So right now, as you can see, the flexibility is much wider. And when we are creating a new user role, and uh, let's say we decide that this will be admin, and also a new checkboxes appear, because we know that a user has access only to the first three tabs, admin also to the configuration, and a super admin also to the administration so let's say if it is a super admin we want to create let's make it an admin we want to create somebody who will have access to dashboards problems i don't want them to see anything about hosts i don't want them to see the overview i don't want them to see the latest data and discovery and uh, it services so only dashboards problems screens and a maps Inventory, yes, why not? Reports, nope, I want to hide it from them, and basically so on. So you can, in a very granular way, define which pages do you want this user to see. And even more, like access to the modules. We don't have a modules right now, but if we would, you could also delimit permission to those. Uh, access to the API, so okay, this user... Uh, let's say customer A because we are running in a multi-tenant environment and we're creating a role for our customer. They also want to run some sort of the um, API calls and then we can create a whitelist or a blacklist with API methods that we want them to use. Let's say we are uh, don't want them to use action.delete method, but it is okay for us to allow them some action.get to only get the information. And access to the actions, like acknowledge the problems or close the problems. No, I don't want them to do that. Click oh, add, and then when you are adding a new user in the front end, so create a user, uh, customer A uh, manager, we will have to define a roles and then it is enough just to click 
this and you will see so they will have access to user interface elements as a dashboards problem screens and maps and that's it from the monitoring and they will also have allowed methods for action delete so we actually made a mistake there and add <coughs> that's it basically but yeah we also of course need to add uh, all the other required parameters so this new functionality with the user roles gives you really granular functionality to create um permission system for the enterprise for the multi-tenant environment for your customers that might be using also your front end in a really really granular way so this is awesome Monitoring of IoT and industrial equipment. So starting since the Zabbix 5.2, the support of MQTT, the most common IoT protocol for the sensors and industrial equipment, and also uh, Modbus protocol is supported. So MQTT and a Modbus as a native functionality starting since the Zabbix 5.2, by using the Zabbix agent or the Zabbix agent 2, so the new uh, agent based on the Go language. Natively, want to monitor your sensors or IoT, you don't need to write any scripts or custom models, just download and install Zabbix 5.2 and you're good to go. Load balancing for user interface and API. So previously it was kind of possible, you could install multiple frontends, but on your load balancer you always uh, had to make sure that the session pers persistence is turned on because there is that tied thing to the session ID which is no longer a problem so you can properly balance all of your traffics from your web interfaces to multiple frontends and make sure that the load is distributed and your frontend is not um let's say struggling performance wise create a custom views so this picture you see here in the hosts monitoring hosts there is a new stuff in the front end. So how it looks like, it's not available in the configuration. So everything is just as it was in the reports. But in the monitoring, let's say problems, there is a home button. And what it is, so you see there is also a new button, save us. So in a large environment, we can have hundreds, thousands of the hosts, host groups, and different sort of the filters. And let's be honest, like every time when you need to log into the front end and apply some sort of the complex filter, it is a bit of pain to do it every time so now we can do like filter on a Zabbix servers and add some different filtering like uh, tags uh, I don't know interface uh, one whatever else and do all the other filters save it as customer a uh, view uh, show number of records if you want to change it set custom time period save and then we go we get another view for a custom view and then we can switch between these views and that's it want to add another one sure no problem just add another filtering for the Zabbix server application will be MySQL and uh, host inventory alias uh, whatever save us and this is gonna be customer B save and there we go so now we have customer A view and a customer B and it will be much easier to navigate across all of your filters. Monitoring hosts, same. You could have hundreds of thousands of the hosts and some of them might be relevant by some database servers. I have just one host group here but you could have multiple and you can again create multiple filterings create save us uh, write in the name and a new view will appear so next time you will log in it will be just clickety through the multiple views and you can get all of the information the yaml export uh, and import for the templates previously it was only xml which was uh, a bit of let's say outdated so now it is possible to export and also import all the data uh, from the Zabbix frontend also using the YAML format and a JSON, which will uh, simplify your configuration management and some sort of the automation with the templates if you're doing that. Usability improvements in the 5.2. So selection of time zone for individual users. Remember when we had those teams uh, in multiple regions, we basically had to create a virtual host in the front end. So right now I can just go to the user settings and set my own time zone. That's it. There is no need to create multiple uh, virtual hosts for the front end engine, just 
every user can select their own time zone and the front end will of course adopt. Better layout for a maintenance definition form. Previously, again, it was a bit of the complicated, so there are multiple tabs, uh, multiple parameters. Now it's all simplified. You have only one screen where you need to fill in the parameters and you're good to go. Simplified logic of shuttling of unsupported metrics. So previously, again, in the administration section, there was additional parameter for when do you want to recheck the unsupported items, which by default was 10 minutes, and now that one is gone. So less configuration and it will respect the update interval of the items. It is possible to specify the default language for all users now. So again, uh, small but great improvement. List of dashboards shows clearly what dashboards are created by me and their sharing options. So if you have a lot of the dashboards, there won't be any problems like messing around who created which one and who edited something where they should not do. Ability to specify SNMP attributes when testing uh, metrics. Again, in 5.0, uh, the testing was already there, but uh, if we talk about SNMP items, uh, I probably don't have it here, so I'll create something SNMP, SNMP agent. Yeah, we need to create an interface, uh, add SNMP, v2, SNMP community, yes, whatever, uh, items, create a new one, test SNMP agent, where it is here, so some sort of the key, and some sort of the OID, so then I can just click add, and find my item called test, and there we go so now we can again click on the test and you see we can actually write in the community name which we previously could not and if it's going to be snpv3 then again we can write in the context name security name security level and all of the required stuff so this thing is finally fixed in a 5.2 release ability to handle unsupported metrics in a special way in a pre-processing so optimization improvements templated screens are converted to templated dashboards so on the host level there are no more screens Template names were shortened and simplified, so just a naming convention in the templates, uh, which is much more straightforward and easier to understand now. Built-in integration with the alerting system, so Zabbix keeps adding a new webhooks for uh, your media types, so you can go to administration media types and you see quite a wide list of uh, out-of-the-box supported media types that you can use as example the pushover or the slack uh, mattermost uh, jira email simple one and a lot of the other things so this list keeps growing built-in integrations with itsm systems uh, new and updated templates and the plugins so also there are new templates like the redis cache mysql nginx ha proxy oracle php fpm squid uh, and also the asterisk, so uh, great features. You choose deploy on premise or in the cloud. So, right now, there are also the cloud images available in. Uh, I don't even remember all the clouds. So, oh, right. So, uh, for the physical, you can use these uh, distributions for the clouds AWS, uh, Azure, Oracle, Docker, uh, OpenShift a lot of functionalities how you can actually deploy it more newly developed and improved features of the 5.2 so a lot of the minor things right like the maximal length of the user macro values was increased to 2048 bytes active zabbix agent may now report data for the multiple hosts which is kind of small improvement but still will help a lot in the big environments and uh, yeah, so don't wait anymore. Discover the Zabbix 5.2 now. Upgrade your existing instance or just uh, install a development environment. So install it in the dev and uh, just go ahead and play with the new features. And if you want to see these videos more, if you want to see some deeper explanation about some of these uh, new features or how to upgrade to the Zabbix 5.2, just uh, click the subscribe button, click the like button if you want to help me out and uh, leave some sort of the comments. And we're definitely see you again in some uh, next video. So thank you for watching. And I hope that you are going to really like the new release of the Zabbix 5.2. Goodbye.